Yeah, they're Jesus. all from Brighton, them lot. Are they? Yeah. He runs the smallest pub in Brighton. Mm. It's a good one as well. Uh, um, I want to congratulate you on your set tonight because it was absolutely astonishing. Oh, yeah, it was a different one. My brother swapped it all around today. He got free rain on it and he thought he'd spice it up a bit. Yeah, so it was, it was a good challenge. God. <laughs> but I'm not talking about the music, I'm talking about uh, the evolution because your music is evolving. It's fantastic. Yeah, we're trying to disprove that you have to get worse as you get older. <laughs> you meant to though, aren't you? It's always acceptable in the other art forms that you can improve. You know, if you're a sculptor filmmaker or whatever like that then you can get better can't you? and um, people are happy to accept that for music you're meant to sort of fall to pieces aren't you and um, have a bit of a breakdown get into drugs maybe um, fall out with each other and then stop making anything listenable there's some, some people don't do that but yeah I don't know. Sense of humour, I don't. See you later. I can't give you a hug because I've got a beer under each arm. Okay, <laughs> nice one, Mike. Come to our gig Saturday. It's worth the trip to Brighton. Thank you very much. I'll sit there. <laughs> <laughs> He's a funny fella. Um, yeah. I hear, I want to know if it's, if it's right, but I hear it's an incredible generosity. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. nice. Yeah, not a lot of people say that. <laughs> yeah, it's weird because to us, we get called all sorts, don't we? You know, oddballs and eccentrics. It's like you look at what we're doing. It's 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 like it's one small step away from everyday everydayness. It's just that music's generally, you know, if you don't fit into a certain very tight category, then you know, you consider it a bit weird. Um, I don't know where I'm going on this one, to be honest. <laughs> Can I ask you about, about your installation? Yeah, I'm not sure if I'll be able to answer very well, because I'm not sure I understood it properly myself yet. And I couldn't go and see it on the day either. So, But yes, you can. <laughs> uh, I was intrigued. Oh, I thought it was a, I thought I found, found myself lucky to do it, you know. How did it come about? Um, come about by a man called Ian, who lives in the Lake District. Who, he lives in the barn where Kurt Schwitters used to do work. Yeah, the, the Lake District Murs barn. And he had heard that we liked Kurt Schwitters too. <laughs> And he's a bit, I think he was like an old punk rocker in his day and that. Well, a young punk rocker in his day, rather. Um, he lives there with his missus now, and he just, we were on tour, and he invited us to come and have um, some soup and a dinner. And we did. And we had, had a look around his barn, and his, we grew up there. That's the other reason. We grew up in the Lake District, like three of us. And he kept, you know saying he was getting this thing going, helping get this thing going with like the, the retrospective because he felt like he wasn't appreciated like he should be, you know, as an artist and as a generator of these ideas, you know. Um, I think it's because he did all sorts, you know. He did like design, sound, poems, sculptures, collages, you know, he did everything, right, basically. He made things out of nothing. I'll just throw, for a long story, to go a bit shorter, <laughs> he just said, well, you know, try and think of something, and then he put us in touch with um, Adrian at the Tate, who was in charge of the late night, who tries to bring more exciting things into the museum with the, you know, live, sort of a live event where they keep the galleries open. And um, 
I don't know. He seemed nice. He's from Barnsley. I put, I, I, you know. <laughs> Can't beat that, really. So, yeah, they just said, you know, what do you want to do? And I said, well, we'll just make us, you know, sound installation. And, yeah, ended up as cardboard boxes. Yeah. I just like the idea of these things sat around. You could sort of almost miss them, you know, but then if you look a bit closer, there's obviously quite big clues in the labelling and they didn't even look old or new. It's meant to sort of celebrate the degenerate artists who were exhibited. 122 of them or something. Um, a lot of famous people and a lot of people you never heard of who were considered um, scum by the Nazis. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, it's kind of a bit of a tribute to them, and, um, I don't know. Do you think it made you think of anything else in the context of music? What, doing the... Doing the take thing, yeah. Um, it's funny because it's something I've been thinking about doing myself. Not in, not exactly the same, because yeah. it's nothing to do with Switters, but I've been thinking about... I don't know, different ways of using sound, you know, things like that. So, it's funny how things come up when you're sort of wanting to do them, you know. You start thinking about it and then someone offers you something, you know. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, no, it hasn't... I couldn't say it's influenced music, but it's something I would like to explore more of, you know. Um, other than, I... I I, I listen to him doing his poem so much, his sound poem, that it does pop out now and again just in random, instead of singing in the shower or something like that, start going like, you know, it makes you, the thing is, it makes you feel good, and I think that's partly why it's good. So, yeah, you know. You can have a complete, you didn't have the restrictions of any convention at all. And you had the ability to make the most beautiful sound. You don't want that sound. You can't say what it would be, but what would it mean or feel like to you? Well, no, I think I get what you're saying. I don't know if I have an answer to it. <laughs> but um, it probably um, what would it as a sound? Uh, don't know. It's, it's a difficult question, actually. Somewhere between a laugh and a hum, I reckon. Yeah. I'd like to know what um, the noise is of the fifth dimension. Well, there's, I think there's meant to be 11. So... 11? Yeah, dimensions. Oh, I can't have you. <laughs> <laughs> the fifth is still be fine. <laughs> um, or melting chocolate. Yeah, I think it'd just be like a sizzle. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it would have to be beyond sound, really, you know, to really be in that. <laughs> to make it, to fit into the dimension it's, it's going to be in in the fifth one. Um, I don't know, you'd take someone else, you'd, you know. If you keep asking, someone will tell you. We were in, um, we went to the CERN, you know, CERN, where they do the shooting the things around there to do a soundtrack and there's all kinds of people there. We met someone who was trying to describe the fifth dimension to us and I believed him but I couldn't comprehend him at all. So, you know. But he said it's where it's at, so you know, I'm sure it'll come along in time. Probably not in time, it'll come along in time, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I'll have a think about it when I've not drunk a lot of whiskey. I can't 
can't wait to see what you do next. Have you got any ideas? Um, no, not after them. Um, no, I've got one idea, but I don't know if it'll happen yet, so I don't want to say. I don't like talking about things that are no. definitely going to happen, because it tends no to be some kind of jinx. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's a better way to put it, yeah. Mm. Try and keep it quite basic, really. You know, um, so don't be a knobhead. Try and, well, if you are, I'll say sorry afterwards, but try not to be a knobhead. Um, yeah, and I don't know, it's, it's not that weird, you know. You're a hugely important player. Uh, I don't know. It's something for the people to worry about, really. You know. This man would be able to answer any question you throw at him. Especially to do with sounds in the fifth dimension. <laughs> not a lot, not a lot. <laughs> He's a good lad. Yeah, well, I don't think we're quite ready to give him a stop yet, so we'll uh, see what happens, I guess. But as um, Sean from the Mannix would say, there's no money in it anymore, so you've got to enjoy it for some other reason. <laughs>